if you want to get anything important done and you want to do it without waiting a long time, then it's important to understand how to motivate yourself. So how well do you know how to motivate yourself? And ho hopefully not in a painful and suffering kind of way, but in a way that makes you excited, inspired, um, you know, ready to take action and not waiting until you're finally in the flow or uh, waiting until lightning strikes and you have this brilliant idea. Because if you do that, let's say you're building a business, it might take you 10 years to finally be able to earn a living from your business when it could have only taken you one year or who knows, maybe even shorter. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about the five motivational methods that have worked best, best for me and for my clients. And as I talk through these five methods, I wanna encourage you to score each one for yourself. How, you know, because these five methods aren't gonna work necessarily as well. Uh, all five won't work. Each one won't work as well as one of the other ones. So zero is a, you know, score at zero. If it's like, no, nah, I've already tried it many times. Definitely won't work for me. And 10 is like, oh my God, that's like the one thing that works for me and I'm really happy to use it. And um, if you want to, you can even do that scoring in the comments below. Uh, just put the method in a few words and what your, what your own score is. I would be curious to know uh, which of these works best for you and which don't work as well, okay? All right, so the first method is for all of us who are dreamers and visionaries. And the method is to connect, reconnect with the why, the, the big picture, the vision, uh, the inspiring goal, uh, to think about the, the possible results that could come from this, to dream about it, to reconnect with it. And something like this could only take a few moments of closing your eyes, imagining, okay, I'm, I, I'm going to do this thing and it's challenging to do. I maybe feel a bit like procrastinating, but let me remember sort of the, the heartfelt emotions that inspired me to do this in the first place. So it's, it's, it is about generating inspiration at will. And if you learn and practice doing that, it's, it, it's incredibly powerful. So a very simple method is to close your eyes if you want to close it. Okay, take a, take a goal, take a, take a project that you know you need to work on that's important to you. It could, it could be any project, okay, that's important to you. And then close your eyes and answer this question. Why is this important? Whom will it help? This is a couple of questions. Okay, so why is it important? Whom will it help? How will it help them? How is their life better as a result of what you're going to be doing, whether it's directly or indirectly? And how will it help you? How will your life be better having accomplished this project? So close your eyes and, and answer those questions. And, and hopefully, you'll even be able to kind of see in your mind's eye kind of a movie scene of the project and its ripple effects on the other people and on your own life. Now, if you're not as good at visualizing in your mind's eye, then you can write down your answers to those questions. Why is it important? Whom will it help? How will it help them? And how will it help you? So reconnect to the why. And why is this important for the world? That's another, that's another good question that, that is, is helpful. Why is this important for the world? Okay. So that's the first method. I'm looking at my notes now. Uh, the first method is to reconnect with the why. And by the way, some people also even record a kind of self-hypnosis on this stuff. And you can just Google record a self-hypnosis to figure out how to do that. But, uh, you know, potentially something to consider. Okay, so the second method. So go ahead, if you want to, uh, score this method from 0 to 10. Put a, put a reconnect with why and, and equals. Give me a zero to, 0 to 10 response there if you would like. Um, okay, so the second method is clarity on the how. Clarity on the how. 
Okay, actually, by the way, I, I should pause and, and let you, well, I'll, I'll, I'll remind you again to score it at the end. So second method is clarity on the how. And this is what really helps me. This is, this is um, my, one of my go-to methods. Uh, reconnecting with the why, I feel like maybe, um, maybe it's been, become so integrated with me, for me, the, the why, the reason I'm doing things, the purpose for it, that I don't really kind of take a moment to, 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 to do that even anymore. I do my energy reboot, which is about connecting to kind of a higher purpose for everything. But my projects, I, I pick projects that, that uh, I know very clearly what the, what the why is. But oftentimes, I, I can procrastinate because I don't even know this. And this may be true for you too, but we're not clear about the how. Like we know this thing is important, but we keep putting it off because we're not crystal clear about the next steps that we can see ourselves taking. We can't, if we can't see ourselves taking the actions, we are far less likely to take the actions. So a very simple way is to write down the exact steps you know you need to take to work on this project and to complete the project. Just write down the steps. So I'll give you an example. Write a blog post, okay? Write a blog post. Now for me is relatively, you know, obvious and, and, and I'm, I'm uh, accustomed to it. But if you weren't accustomed to writing a blog post and just seeing that on your to-do list is scary for you, then you need to clarify the smallest chunked baby steps you can take to be able to get there. So let me give you examples here. Example, write down at the top of the top of a document, write a blog post, okay? And then let's write the baby steps. Baby step one, open a blank document. Literally, write that down. And now you might say, that sounds silly. No, it's not silly. Because when you start getting the momentum of checking off these little baby steps, you'd be like, oh, I could do this. Oh, I could do that. Oh, I could do this. You have to write down the steps that is small enough where oh, that's no problem at all. That you have to you have to get down to that uh, level of comfort with the next step. So open a blank document. Oh, I can do that. <laughs> it's easy. And of course, it might take you a minute to do because you have to open the software or whatever. Or okay. And then two. And step two. Brainstorm three points I'd like to make in this post. And I think to myself, okay, well I can I can brainstorm three points. I think I could do that. Step three, write a few sentences about each point. Great. I think I can do that. I could write a few sentences about each point. See, then I'm not thinking about the intimidating write a blog post. You know, it's such a big project to some of you it might seem like that, right? Step four, rearrange and edit the sentences. Oh, I think I can rearrange sentences and, and edit it to make it maybe a little bit clearer. Okay, et cetera, et cetera, right? So, Try this, and this is something I literally do for myself often. So I wanna ask you to give that a try, okay? Whatever project isn't immediately, you're going into it, you know, very smooth and flowing, if you're either hesitating at all, do me a favor, try, you know, just take the three minutes to write down the exact baby steps that'll take and make sure each step is, oh, I can do that, it's no problem, it's so simple, right? Okay. So if any one of the steps feels daunting at all, again, you're looking at the step and you're, you're resisting it, that means you need to write down smaller steps underneath that. So for example, if I wrote down brainstorm three points for this post and that scares me, intimidates me, makes me hesitate, and I'm not sure what to do now, then I need to write down smaller steps. Okay, so sub point A would be to um, brainstorm one point, or I might ask myself a question so it's, so I answer the question. So the question might be, what's one thing I feel is true about this topic that I'd like more people to think about? What's one thing that I don't hear as often? What's one thing? Just one thing. I mean, it could be anything. So, so, so part of, the, part of the, the trick of doing this is you might ask a question on your steps that when you take the actions, you answer the question. Does that make sense? Okay. So, um, and what else I also do once I... Once I write down the steps, is I I I I, could, I might actually time the steps. That also helps me to like get into action and not spend too long doing something, because the the amazing um, I guess secret that I've discovered to productivity is you can work a lot faster than you think you can, 
And I see this all the time. When I teach courses, right, I have people join my live courses, my online live courses, and I'm, I'm asking them questions and they're chatting their responses in. I am always, and those of you who have been to my live courses know what the experience is like. Aren't you always surprised how brilliant you are in the moment when there's a timer? When, there's, when someone is asking you a question and you're just saying what's, what's coming to you? I mean, you, you can work so much faster than you are doing right now. But you're just you're 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 the one getting yourself in you're you're getting in your own way by being perfectionistic by being afraid. It's really fear. That's the one thing that holds all of us back from building an amazing, thriving business right now. I mean, not right now, but taking actions right now to build a business much sooner than 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 waiting years and years and years. It's fear, and everything I I try to teach in my business and marketing is about you letting go of the fear because the fear is not. It's an illusion. It's like, well, uh, if you have a spiritual practice, I recommend that that is be the, your highest priority ever for anything because a spiritual practice is what it's supposed to do is to get rid of fear. And so if you have fear, whenever you have fear, the, the trigger should be, oh, I need to do my spiritual practice because I have forgotten. I have forgotten that everything is going to be okay. I have forgotten that everything is okay right now. and Everything's profoundly beautiful and connected and this whole thing is a miracle and my destiny is perfection and beauty and power and love and creativity and freedom and perfect bliss that's my that's my that's my destiny that's your destiny too you forgot that okay you forgot that this is just a video game we're playing right now called life the simulation project called life earth this is a video game that's my that's my newest uh analogy about about life is uh, some you know I used to think life is a school or or you know gymnasium you know, life is a video game it's a video game so if you ever play video games you know that you have to level up you're going through experiences you have um, you know uh, you have monsters and things you have to jump over and this is exactly what life is except the monsters here are building a business the fear of building a business the fear of rejection the fear those are the monsters and you, you have to you know beat defeat them with love you have to defeat them with courage you have to defeat them with virtues and that's what we're really developing here our, our experience points our virtues and character you know is really what this video game called life is about so fear is just if when you remember that just like when you put down a video game you're perfectly okay you know if you play the video game as often as you want reincarnation I mean, if you believe in that or, or, or whatever so anyway a little bit of a my spiritual uh, sermon for for two minutes uh, but but it, it I say that because it really is foundational to how I build my business it's foundational to how I'm able to move forward with so much courage all the time making all the mistakes I, I want to make because it doesn't matter I could play this game as often as I want as many times as I want and so um, Okay, so I, I, I put time, I put times into my baby steps. Open document, 2.01 p.m. Okay, I'll finish doing that. Brainstorm three points I'd like to make in this post. 2.10 p.m. or whatever I think is reasonable. 15 minutes or 10 minutes or 20 minutes or whatever. Okay, you put the times in with, this, with the baby steps, you're much more likely to like, okay, let's make it a game. Let's, let's do it, okay? All right, so that's the second uh, motivational method is to clarity on the how and to write down the baby steps let me know uh, on a, from a zero to 10 from your own experience, how does this motivational method work for you? So I'd love to know, give me, a, give me, a, give me your own scoring here. Write down clar clarifying the baby steps and then, and then, and then uh, give me a score there if, if you want to. Okay, so the third motivational method, co-working. Now, if you've never done virtual co-working, and I should clarify virtual co-working, you could do physical co-working too, but essentially virtual co-working is imagine you and I getting on a video call, okay? I see you on video, you see me on video, and then we just put each other into a corner. Well, first, we check in for a minute. Okay, let's say, let's schedule for an hour. Okay, you and I schedule for an hour, and then, you, and then, and then we check in in the beginning of the hour and say, hey, uh, Sarah, what are you working on this hour? Sarah says, oh, I'm, I'm going to be writing a blog post. By the end of this hour, I hope to have drafted, you know, 500 words, 1,000 words, whatever. That's my, that's my goal. That's my, that's my aim. And I'm going, to do, I'm going to try to do it with grace and with ease and with, with courage and with fun and with inspiration. That's my, that's my aim to, 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 to do this. George, what are you working on? Oh, I'm going to be working on outlining my next course, and I'm going to be blah, blah, blah. So we check in for a minute. 
And then we each put our videos to the corner. I can still see Sarah, Sarah can still see me. And we just work quietly for an hour or for 50 minutes. Okay, we just work quietly on, she's working on her blog post, I'm working on my outline or whatever I'm working on. And then by the end of the 50 minutes, then there's a chime that comes in and, uh, uh, Sarah, so how did it go for you? Oh, it was, uh, took me a while to get into it, but yeah, I finally was able to draft 550 words. Amazing, right? Amazing. When there's a, when there's a timer, what we can do, right? Uh, George, how do you do? Oh, I, so that's it. That's virtual co-working. If you've never done that before or you're not doing it on a regular basis, please at least try it for three sessions. I, promise me if you want to. Okay. Try it for three sessions. I promise you it will be different than what you imagine and probably better than what you imagine. Every client, just about every client that I recommended virtual co-working to, it's changed their way of working. And guess what? I do virtual co-working several hours a day, every day that I work. So for example, today I'm doing virtual co-working. I did, I already did an hour of virtual co-working. I'm going to do three more hours. I'm doing four hours of virtual co-working today. What about you? It's because, especially when we work by ourselves, it's very easy to procrastinate, to surf Facebook, to do this, to do that, to give excuses. I'm tired right now. I don't feel like showing up or whatever. But when you do virtual co-working, you set, you schedule the time with someone and then they're counting you to show, they're counting on you to show up and you're counting on them to show up. And this, and so there's a system for this. And the system for this that I use is called Focusmate. And the website is focusmate.com, F-O-C-U-S-M-A-T-E.com, focusmate.com, okay? And uh, for those of you who are in my programs or take my courses, um, you can even join my Focusmate community if you want to. So um, Focusmate right now is free. Later on, they'll start charging, but right now it's still free. So if you are a student in my courses, if you've taken more than one of my courses, then ask me and I will invite you to my Focusmate community so you and I can work together personally. It'll be you and me. And, and sometimes it'll be you and someone else in my community. Okay, so will you try Focusmate? Does, and, and people are on Focusmate 24 hours a day. I mean, because there's people all over the world who use Focusmate. So it doesn't matter if you work at 3 a.m. or 3 p.m. There's somebody else in the world who wants to do Focusmate with you. Focusmate.com. Promise me you will try it for three sessions before you, you, you evaluate. You, uh, if, if, you're, if you're already productive, it'll make you even more productive. If you're not productive, it'll make you productive. So whatever level you're at, it will surprise you how much it'll help you. It sounds so simple. Like, what do you mean? This, uh, try it. If you've never tried it, you don't know what it's like. Okay, so hopefully I've, I've, made, I've made that, that case for Focusmate because I use it all the time. And my clients who have said, so George, you've been telling us Focusmate for three years. I finally tried it. It changed my life. Why did it take you three years to try it? Well, because it didn't seem like it was effective. It didn't sound, it sounded too simple. I know. <laughs> it sounded like, no, just try it. Okay, just try it. Today, today, try one hour of focus me. Okay, just try it. You can work on anything you want. Some people use focus me to clean their office because that, that's something they procrastinate on. I don't care. You, some people use focus me to exercise. As long as you stay on camera, okay, that, that's, that's what matters. Okay, so give it a try. Give it a try. Any questions you have, let me know. Okay, um, all right, the fourth, um, and by the way, uh, I should mention Focusmate is not, is not a coaching tool. It's not you get it on with me and you get free coaching. No, that's not how it works. We only check in about our, our project and we each work quietly for 50 minutes. It's not, a, it's not a conversation, okay? So that's why it's, it's very productive. Okay, so the fourth motivational method is having an accountability partner. So besides Focusmate, which is a co-working partner, you may want to have an accountability partner and research has shown, and I, when I put the blog post associated with this video later, uh, I will give you the link to the, to the research. Research has shown, they did a test on this. Um, people who did not write down their goals and report to an accountability partner versus people who did. The people who did write down their goals and action commitments and report to an accountability partner got 77% more done than the people who just kind of thought about their goals, okay? Um, so do you want to get 77% more done? Wouldn't, so imagine, okay, 77% more done. What would, that, what would that mean for you? Okay, well, get an accountability partner 
and write down your action commit, write down what actions you're gonna take and check in with your accountability partner and have them do the same, obviously. Okay, so that's the fourth, um, and it could be a coach you hire or a friend or a colleague or someone you meet in one of my courses or someone you meet right here in the comments section of this video, okay? So it's gotta be someone that you, you know, you, 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 you feel like you wanna check in with regularly. And in the blog post that I put later, I'll give you a kind of an overall format for accountability meeting, but it's, you can use whatever format you want that might work for you, but make it a, make it a very efficient meeting or, or just check in via, via email or private message. Okay, so finally, the fifth motivational method that works amazing for me, I use this all the time, is public accountability. Now, specifically, having a deadline that you announce to the public for when a deliverable is due to, 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 to the audience you announce it to. So if one person is gonna keep you accountable, imagine the power of having your whole audience keep you accountable to something. Now, I know it sounds scary. Remember, whenever there's fear, just go back to your spiritual practice because, you're, because fear is just an illusion. There's no, there's no need for fear for anything. There's no mistakes. Mistakes are just learning experiences, that's all. Okay, fear, there's no, you will, you, it doesn't matter what happens to you, you'll be fine, you'll be fine, right? So, um, so, so anyway, this is how I write my books, this is how I create my courses. You know I create a course every month or every two months. How do I get it done every month or two months? It's because I tell you all I'm gonna do it. So for example, the, the next, the upcoming course, The Path of Mastery, it's coming up next week. So I, you know, last weekend, you know, I was preparing the course outline and blah, 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 blah. It's because I, you expect me to deliver. So I'm gonna be doing it by the time I told you I'm doing it. You signed up for it, so I'm gonna teach it, right? So public accountability is just brilliant. I, I, and, and a simple way of doing it, let me, let me tell you a simple way of doing this. Go to Facebook events. I think it's just facebook.com slash events, I think it is. Yeah, facebook.com slash events. Go there, and then on the left-hand side, click on create, and you create an event. Create a public event, okay? You can even create a private event and just invite like 10 of your friends. By, by public accountability, I mean having more than one person keeping you accountable. Hopefully, it's like 10 or 20 or more people. But you create a Facebook event, and, you, and you, the name of the Facebook event is whatever deliverable you are really wanting to get done. Okay, by, and then the date of the event is the date, the day and time that you will be, you will, you will say that you've gotten it done. And then you create the event and then you invite 10, 20, 30 of your supportive Facebook friends to the event and say, hey everybody, keep me accountable. I'm gonna deliver the draft of my first book you know, by July 15th at you know, 12 p.m. or whatever it may be. Please keep me accountable. Ask me how it's going. I, I'm gonna put my progress as I go in this Facebook event page. You see, brilliant. I mean, using Facebook event to, 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 to create that kind of accountability and publicly is, is, you know, it's free, right? So there you go, five motivational methods. I'm gonna, I'm gonna rattle them off again and I would love if you are open to it to score yourself on what, which one will work best for you, okay? So give a zero to 10 on each of these five methods. Zero is like, oh, I've tried it so many times. It doesn't work for me, just somehow I'm not built for that. Okay, a 10 is like, yeah, that's, that's gonna be amazing for me or that has been amazing for me. Zero to 10, okay, ready? And, and write down a few words of what the method is before you score it so that I know which one you're scoring. Otherwise, if you just put a number, I have no idea which one you're scoring. So, so okay, method number one is called reconnect with why. Reconnect with a Y. Okay, what's your score? Go ahead and put that down in the comments if you want to. Zero to 10. Reconnect with the Y. Okay, all right. Second method, ready, ready? Okay, second method is clarifying the how, you know, the baby steps and writing that down. Zero to 10. What, 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 what uh, how might it work for you? Would you think it's a, a great fit for you? Let me know, zero to 10, okay. And you will thank you for, for scoring, uh, scoring yourself there, appreciate it. So clarifying the how, clarifying the how, what is your score, zero to 10, okay? Clarifying the how, all right. Third method, 
virtual co-working or just co-working. You might actually have a physical friend show up and you do co-working together. But when, this, when it comes to physical things, it might get like, you might have too much fun, you know, you might just like start chatting it away. So I recommend Focusmate, which is Focusmate is a system built where everybody knows and there's a timer and everything. It's everything is already built for you. The scheduling tool, it's all built for you there. So it's much easier to use than, you know, and, and much more accountability than just like having a friend show up and you all chat it up and never get to work kind of thing or take 40 minutes to get to work, right? So co-working, uh, zero to 10, will it work for you? Have you tried it? Zero to 10, what do you think? Will it work for you? Okay, thanks. I see the scores from uh, Captain and Todd and uh, Sarah, uh, Sarah. I know you can scroll back to the beginning later. Uh, Wendy, uh, V, uh, so great. Okay, so co-working, number three, co-working, uh, zero to 10. Okay, number four, having an accountability partner. Somebody that you, you're writing down your, your goals, your action commitments, and then you're sending and you're checking in and your accountability partner is going to be asking you at the end of the week or sometimes even at the end of the day, depending on how intensively you want to do it. But let's say at the end of the week, they check in with you. How did it go with the actions that you said you were going to do? How did it go? One, one person you check in on. So zero to 10 accountability partner. Is that going to work for you? Awesome. Great. And by the way, if you are looking for an accountability partner, okay, you might you know, mention that in, in the comments um, and maybe you can get paired up with, uh, with somebody else. Okay. So, all right. Um, and number five is public accountability, having, you know, having a deliverable that you're going to say, I'm going to do my first draft of my book, or I'm going to, I'm going to create a course, or I'm going to do something. I'm going to finish my website or whatever it might be, uh, on, by this date, this time. And you invite, you invite a bunch of friends to keep you accountable. So public accountability, zero to 10, what are your thoughts on that? And by the way, your scores, of course, can change over time. As you try things out, you might discover something really, really works well for you or something doesn't work well for you. It's okay. You don't have to use all five of these methods. You can, but if you even if you find just one of these five and, and really, really use it and use it consistently, it can change your life. That's all. So you need to discover, and by the way, if you have another motivational method that really works for you that I didn't mention, please comment below and let me know what that is because I might want to explore it or, you know, might ask you more about it. So if there's a, a way for you to get yourself going on a project that works well for you, please comment below, okay? Um, Great. <laughs> uh, public accountability. I'm getting some emojis here. <laughs> People's faces. That's great. Awesome. Okay. So uh, regardless of, of which accountability method you choose, I hope that underlying, your underlying motivation for doing all these things, may you return to love as you do these things. May you return to joy. As you do whatever project you're doing, it doesn't matter if it's something inspiring like writing your book, book or if it's something so-called boring like doing your bookkeeping. May you have this underlying motivation, uh, not even a method, but just a spirit, an attitude of, 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 of love, of joy, of, of grace, of, you know, um, of equanimity as you, as you go ahead and do your things. And from there, and using one of these other methods, may you get things done that make you so happy to get done. All right, I'll let you go. Uh, I hope this was helpful. Looking forward to your any suggestions or, or questions and um, great, and, and your scorings. Um, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Thanks everyone for joining me live. Todd, Captain, Sarah, Bryce, Trudy, Wendy, V. Malia, Natinning, uh, Yule, um, uh, Clement. Um, let's see here. Who else did I haven't named yet? I think I named everybody. Santa, um, PJ. So thanks, everybody. Have a great day. Go forward and try one of these things, okay? See you.